Hello everyone, this is Jason Merkel, and we're here today with a video that is an unboxing and then assembly of the E-Flight EC1500 Twin 1.5 meter airplane. And this is a really exciting airplane, guys. Uh, I know that uh, some people absolutely love the way it looks. Some people wonder why it's not as scale as it could have been. Uh, and there's a lot of different reasons for that. There is an entire video where we discuss all the greater points of the model. But for those that are interested in potentially purchasing one or that have already purchased one, we're gonna walk you through taking it out of the box, assembling it with a couple of tips along the way, some of the things maybe that are mentioned in the manual, but then some things that will also enhance your experience experience. So uh, as you guys can see, it's a big box. It's a big airplane. And that's one thing that's really hard to explain when it comes to specifications with airplanes. So you might hear 1.5 meter wingspan and you think, oh, you know, it's very similar in size to my original timber or my turbo timber, but it's not. Even though the wingspan is 1.5 meter, the girth of the airplane is much more than that. So you guys are going to see that air as I unbox it. So I'm going to pull it out of the box here. And the nice thing about this airplane is, although it's very large and although there's a lot of uh, cool features to this aircraft, it is not difficult to put together. There are not a lot of parts to the airplane to assemble because most things have already been done for you at the factory. So we'll slide it out here. We'll put the color box off to the side. Now we got what looks like a, a giant coffin of foam. And so first thing I'm going to point out is this really cool decal sheet that we include, which allows you to personalize and customize the finish of the trim scheme. So uh, this was inspired by a Coast Guard trim scheme. Uh, and that said, you know, you can put Coast Guard on there. Of course, you can put Army, you can put Marines. Uh, you can even, you know, some guys have actually already repainted the aircraft and then stuck these stickers on top of that. So we wanted to leave those off and include them separately so you could do uh, whatever you prefer. Um, and then, of course, got the instruction manual. And I know when it comes to instruction manuals, a lot of guys say, oh, I don't need that. And to be honest, yeah, this airplane is so simple to put together, most people could figure it out without the instruction manual. Um, but that said, I am going to follow the instruction manual today. That way, uh, you guys can also follow along with it when you're assembling your model as well. So I'll set that off to the side. So uh, as is the case with any of these aircraft, uh, when you're pulling them out of the box, you wanna be careful, wanna make sure that you don't damage any of the components as you're um, unboxing it. So one of the things I'll point out here is these, the first bubble wrapped uh, part here is actually a set of skis. These are the option to use skis that are included in the box. They clip over top of the landing gear and you can use these on snow, of course. Uh, some guys have already been using them on wet grass as well. So that's kind of cool. We're gonna set those off to the side because we are not going to be installing those just yet today. Uh, and then I'm gonna start unboxing the major components. And so we've got some tape here. We gotta move out of the way. And up here on top, we have the uh, wing spar and the stab spar. So we get those out of the box here. So there are the spars. And then we've got the right hand wing panel. And as you guys can see, the wing panels come pretty much fully assembled from the factory. You've got the servos are already installed, the linkages are already installed, uh, there's hinges in here that are already factory installed. We've got lights, a landing light, navigation light, the power system is installed and then a cell in each wing. And then what's really cool is we've got these individual connectors here. There's just one connection. When you slide the wing to the fuselage, it contacts the um, the battery power leads and then also the servo leads and the light power leads. And uh, that's a very heavy duty connector made for that purpose and it works great in this application. And that makes assembling and disassembling very, very quick and easy. Uh, most people are going to say when they see this together, oh, I, I can't transport that in one piece. No problem. It's very easy with a couple of thumb screws to take each wing panel off. So uh, it makes it more convenient to store in a transport. So we got the other wing panel coming out here now as well. And then something else that we'll get into when we're assembling is that you can actually configure the wing differently depending on your preferences. You can set it up so you've got, as it comes out of the box, the small flap and what we call the large aileron. And this center section here, you can actually connect it to either the flap so you have a larger flap or you connect it to the aileron as it comes out of the box to have that larger aileron. Uh, it's kind of a nice little customizing feature. Some guys are gonna prefer the larger aileron. Those that fly aggressive aerobatics or want to fly 3D aerobatics, they'll prefer this. Uh, for those that prefer maybe more scale-like flying or shorter takeoffs and landings, they may prefer the larger flap and the smaller aileron. So uh, those specifics are all covered in the manual. Set the wing panel off to the side here. 
And then one of my favorite parts of, of the airplane, and I think for a lot of people also their favorite part, is the cool custom five blade props. These are really, really awesome looking. Uh, they work great, they look great. Uh, there are, they are counter rotating, so you have to be careful. You gotta put these on the right side, the correct side for each one, otherwise the uh, airplane will go backwards. I actually did read uh, comments from a few people who installed the props on the wrong sides, and then when they throttled up, it pushed back, and yeah, that's not what you want. So, got the first prop out there, got the other prop here. And I've already seen guys trying to put these props on other models because they like them so much. And it is such a unique feature of this aircraft. And then we've got the horizontal stabilizers here, which these are really, really cool. Uh, the designer, Matt Andron, uh, wanted to make this airplane as simple to put together and potentially take apart as possible. These stabs slide in, snap into place, uh, and they don't require any fasteners to hold them, uh, even through the most aggressive 3D aerobatic maneuvers. It's absolutely a phenomenal design. It works really, really, really well. Set those off to the side. We've also got the spinners, which are, of course, custom cut, custom made for the five blade props. We've got those, two of those to set off to the side. Uh, and then hardware bag. And something I want to point out with the hardware bag is that it does include the hardware for not only assembling the airplane, which there's very, very little hardware required to actually assemble the airplane, but there's extra hardware in here. And some guys have mentioned after they built the airplane, I have all these extra pieces that look important. And those are primarily intended for mounting the floats. So if you do install the optional floats, you'll use this hardware that's the excess hardware in this bag. You do also need a separate hardware kit, which includes a push rod, for example, to actuate the water rudder. That is available separately. Um, and then you can install the uh, 15 size E-Flight floats, the floats that we've used for many years on our apprentice models in particular. And then you can fly this thing off of uh, water as well, which is a, a really cool feature. This is, again, almost in some ways like a Swiss army knife of airplanes. It can do all kinds of things. You can fly it from, uh, you know, paved surfaces, dirt surfaces, gravel surfaces, grass. You can put the skis on it, fly it from wet grass or from snow, and you can put the floats on it to actually fly it out of water. It's absolutely incredible. There's honestly not very many airplanes out there that have all of those features and functions in one model. And then the bulk of the model, the fuselage. What's really interesting is because this is a twin aircraft and the power systems are mounted in the wings, fuselage is very light. A lot of the weight is in the wings because that's where the motors and ESCs are at. So you guys can see it's a very, very large, good sized model. And of course we've got the very popular uh, operational cargo door back here. And we've got the cargo bay inside the airplane here. We've already seen guys dropping all kinds of crazy things. The coolest thing I've seen so far dropped out of it is water balloons. They're awesome, falling out of there and splashing all over the place. Of course, you gotta be careful what you drop and where you drop it. Um, but that's really it. That's the bulk of pretty much everything other than one more major piece here. And that is the vertical stab. And uh, what's nice about this is it does bolt on and is removable. It's not molded into the fuselage the way that a lot of vertical stabs are on smaller models. And so as some people have pointed out, uh, that works out well because if you ever tip the airplane over, flip it over for whatever reason, and you damage the vertical fin, you can just replace this entire stab section with a new spare part. Uh, you don't actually have to, to you know, suffer through a, a damaged vertical fin for the life of the airplane. And that's it. And we'll set this foam off to the side. And there you guys have it. You can see the major components. There aren't a lot of parts to the airplane, which is uh, really kind of my, my kind of airplane, I will say. I've been in the hobby for a very long time, and I've built everything from, from wood kits, scratch built my own aircraft, uh, and then assembled all kinds of foam aircraft that required you to cut uh, surfaces out to hinge them and all of that. Uh, not fun thing to do, um, but you know, one of our goals here at Horizon Hobby and with our E-Fly brand aircraft in particular is to make them as easy to assemble, as quick to assemble as possible, because the vast majority of us prefer to fly rather than to build. Um, not saying there's anything wrong with those that like to build, uh, but that said, you know, most of our aircraft are fully factory finished and mostly factory assembled, so that way they're easy to finish putting together to get ready to fly. So I have read through the manual before, uh, and I'm going to go through it again, kind of follow it step by step here. The first step is going to be installing the vertical fin and the horizontal stabs, and that's relatively quick and easy. The vertical fin goes on with two of the uh, screws. I'm gonna dump out the hardware bag here. So we've got easy access to that. All right. 
And so the vertical fin does have the servo already installed for the rudder. And there's a connector here that slides into a mating connector in the fuselage. And that's nice because you don't have to fumble with any wires or make any connections here. And there are hard plastic pieces here that the uh, fin aligns into. And those also uh, help secure the model. So, or help secure the vertical fin to the model. So you have to kind of be careful when you're, when you're pressing this down in. You actually, my, I made a mistake there. You actually have to slide in the, the leading edge area first. And you kind of slide the vertical fin down into place. Be careful, again, you don't want to push too hard too quickly or you might damage some foam and or you might damage that connector. Make sure it is seated well. And then you can kind of eyeball it and make sure that you can see light all the way through the screw holes. Then you know you've got it down all the way and you're ready to install your mounting screws. Nice thing is uh, you basically just need a Phillips screwdriver, kind of a medium size as most people would probably refer to it. And then also you will need some type of a wrench, which we'll get to in a few minutes here when we install the props. Uh, some guys have installed the props using a needle nose pliers or uh, even hand tightening them. And, and that's not enough on this model in particular. And we'll get into those details here shortly. So we are gonna bolt the vertical stab on first. And then one of my favorite parts is installing the, uh, the horizontals, horizontal stabs. It's very, very easy to do because it doesn't actually require any hardware at all. Oh, by the way, uh, the servo is already installed and on all of the control surfaces in this model, uh, we have ball links on both ends. So on the control horn and on the servo arm side. And that's really, really nice hardware. Uh, and this aircraft is intended to be flown not only semi-scale or scale inspired, so you can fly it around nice and slow the way a potential full-scale cargo aircraft would, but one of the unique capabilities of it is that it also is fully aerobatic and fully 3D capable. And that's one of the reasons that we have that really solid um, ball link hardware on there. We also have metal geared servos on all the control surfaces, which is fantastic also on the cargo door. Uh, so that way, if you fly aggressively or you bump the surfaces of getting in and out of your vehicle, you won't strip the gears. So as you guys can see, that's it. Vertical fin is already installed. Now we're going to install the horizontal stabs. So now that we've got the joiner rod in the fuselage, we're gonna slide the left stabilizer into place on it. And again, before we slide the stab into place, we're gonna make sure that the elevator lines up with the joiner and actuator here, and that the horizontal stab is lined up with the slot there. We're gonna slide it, and as you guys slide this into place, you're gonna hear it click and snap into place solid. And now we've got that side in, I'm gonna push the joiner rod, make sure that it's seated pretty much all the way into the left stab, and now I'm going to slide the right stab into place. Slide it onto the joiner rod there. Again, elevator into the actuator. Stab itself into the slot in the fuselage here. We're gonna slide it in until we hear it click. Pull on it. There we go, and that's it. Now, some guys have added some tape on that joint just because it makes them feel more comfortable. We've flown this airplane really hard for a long time and never done that, and it's not necessary, but it certainly doesn't hurt if you wanted to add some, some clear tape, scotch tape or something on that joint, uh, you could do that. And then I'm gonna slide in the other side here. And that's it. And now you guys can see the elevator is working. I'm gonna be very careful they're exercising the servo, but as you can see, the joiner is actuating both sides equally. And that's it. The fuselage and the tail surfaces have been installed now, and uh, we're pretty much ready to move on to the next step, which will be installing the propellers and then ultimately putting the wings on the airplane. So next up here in the manual, it does talk more about the uh, option to move the joiner. So instead of having the large aileron and the small flap, you can have the large flap and the small aileron. So it's up to you if you want to do that. That is an option. Uh, if you are using a higher channel count receiver, uh, seven or eight, nine channel receiver or more, you can potentially have the aileron and flap servos plugged into separate channels uh, on each wing half. And then you can mix them so you can have crow, you can have full span ailerons, full span flapperons, you can do all kinds of crazy mixing. The vast majority of people are of course gonna have the bind and fly basic version, which includes a six channel receiver. And so they will decide again, do you want the larger aileron for aerobatics or do you want the larger flaps for, uh, for more slow flight, better slow flight performance um, and that kind of thing. So 
we're not going to change it. Again, out of the box, it comes with a large aileron and the small flap configuration. I think a lot of people are going to want to try this to begin with. Even if you're not into aerobatic flying, I'd recommend flying it just like this first. Then go ahead and switch over to the large flap. You can always switch back to the large aileron if you do prefer that down the road, um, but it doesn't hurt to have, uh, to try both ways, really, to see what you, ends up being your preference. So again, the manual covers the specifics of that before the next step, which is installing the propellers. And this is where uh, I think it's, you have to take a little bit of extra time to assemble this model. There's a combination of things happening here. We've got very, very large, relatively heavy five blade props. And uh, because these props have so much mass to them, you have to make sure that they're tightened well onto the shaft. It's really not tightening the prop as much as tightening the collet style adapter onto the shaft of the motor to make sure the props stay secure. Because there's so much mass, when you're throttling up and down, if you don't have that collet cinched tightly on that shaft as tightly as possible, the propellers could come off. On a single motor airplane, that can be a problem. Obviously, the prop comes off at a bad inopportune time and you have to glide down. That can't be great. When you have a twin power model, you don't want to lose one propeller. Although this has counter-rotating propellers, uh, and that makes it fly phenomenal with no torque effect when you have both of them on there, if you lose one, immediately throttle back, land without power preferably. You can actually fly this airplane on one motor. We've done it many times with one motor, one propeller. Uh, it does require some cross control with rudder and aileron. So most experienced pilots will have no problem doing that. But that said, the goal here is to make sure you never lose a propeller. So we're gonna show you guys how to do that. And one thing that I wanna point out is the tool that you use to install the propeller on this model in particular is very important. So in this case, we're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket and a socket wrench, a reasonably sized socket wrench. I could use a smaller wrench potentially, but I'm not gonna be able to get the leverage that I want. Now you can also use other tools such as an adjustable wrench. If you use an adjustable wrench, I recommend it be kind of medium sized or larger. The goal here is to make sure that you can get enough leverage tightening the nut on without stripping it, of course. And then a secondary tip, which we'll go over, is to make sure that the motor and or back plate of the spinner do not spin. The forward uh, face of the collet and the back plate of the spinner are not knurled. And so if you tighten it down enough, it will grab, but then what will happen is as you're tightening or trying to tighten more, the entire motor prop shaft and spinner black plate will spin as you hold the propeller and tighten the nut. And you're not actually tightening down the collet enough at that point. So uh, first thing we're gonna do though, and I've mentioned this earlier, is you gotta make sure you stick, you install your propellers on the correct sides of the airplane. So there is a graphic in here that shows that the, uh, the, the left side of the airplane, the uh, propeller when you're looking at it from the front is going to go counterclockwise and the right side is going to go clockwise. So we need to make sure looking at the propeller that we mimic that. Uh, and in this case, you guys can very clearly see in the drawings which direction is the leading edge. And so you wanna make sure you install these correctly. If you don't, what'll happen is when you throttle up the first time, the propellers are gonna go backwards and the airplane's gonna go backward. Uh, probably a comical and funny thing to have happen, uh, but that said, you gotta make sure you install these correctly in order to fly the airplane correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the uh, right wing panel there. And you can see I've got the propeller for that side here. I'm going to unscrew the spinner cone first. So there is a small Phillips screw that goes and is threaded into the end of the prop shaft. So first I'm gonna take that out. Then I'm going to unscrew the nut and slide off the washer. Now in the manual, the first iteration of the manual, it actually shows in the drawing, if you look at the order of the components, it shows the spinner black plate coming behind the uh, the back collar on the, um, the collet. That's not correct. Of course, just the way it was assembled out of the box, and as you'll see in the other exploded view in the instruction manual, you have to start with the collet shaft, then you have the collet back plate there, then you put the spinner back plate on. Now you slide on your propeller, then the washer, and the nut. And I will go ahead and tighten this down a little bit almost finger tight there, so everything is kind of solid and together. And now I'm going to grab the wing panel. Now, some have mentioned that they prefer to install the propeller while the wing is mounted on the airplane because then the wing panel's not moving all around and it gives them more leverage. Uh, it's up to you which method you use. Um, I've done this a few times now with just the wing already off of the airplane and it's not much of a problem. 
Uh, it does take, you, have to, you just have to make sure that you have a good grip on the propeller so it doesn't spin, and then ultimately on the spinner back plate and or the motor. And so I will use my fingers here to hold that the best that I can while I use my 10 millimeter socket to tighten that nut as much as possible. Now you can over tighten and strip the threads on the collet shaft. You have to be careful to not over tighten it, but at the same time, I will say that it's more critical to get it as secure as possible on this airplane than a lot of airplanes and using the right tool, a large enough wrench with enough leverage and by holding the motor and or spinner back plate from spinning, you should be able to do that successfully every time. So I'm gonna tighten it up here. And so again, I am now holding the propeller with my finger and I'm holding the spinner back plate with two fingers to make sure that it doesn't spin. If I tighten this nut down and just hold the propeller, I am currently, you guys don't see it on camera, but I am spinning the motor, the shaft, and the spinner back plate right now. And so by holding the spinner back plate down, now I can feel it tightening all the way. There it is. Now, even when I'm trying to tighten it by holding just the propeller now, the spinner back plate is not moving. So if you hold the, the, the propeller and you go to tighten the nut and the entire spinner back plate and or shaft and motor are spinning, then that means you're not tight enough. You wanna go a little bit tighter than that. So make sure to take your time to install these props securely. I'm now going to put the spinner cone on. Oh, and actually I did forget to mention that there is uh, a corresponding uh, spinner cone for each of the spinner uh, back plates and, and propellers. So actually the back plate is the same on both spinners, but the cutouts in the spinner cone match the direction of the prop. So I had the wrong spinner in hand. So now I'm gonna put the correct one on here and as you guys can see, it fits over just nice like that. And then we're going to tighten this down. Now I will be very careful here and, and this is something else that I've learned over the years. When you have a plastic spinner cone like this, you don't want to over tighten it because you can potentially deform the spinner cone. And then if it's deformed, it can actually wobble. And then that creates extra vibration that you don't want. Also, you wanna make sure that you kind of twist the cone so that it's not rubbing on the leading or trailing edges of either any of the prop blades. And then right there, you kind of get it cinched down tight. Of course, this has nothing to do with keeping the propeller installed. This is really for the aesthetics of having the uh, spinner cone installed. And um, you want to have it snug. It doesn't have to be super tight. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to have it so tight that it deformed it. So that's it. You guys can see we're already done one side. And how cool is that? I love the way those five blade props look. Absolutely awesome on there. So next up is the other wing panel and the other prop. So again, I've got my spinner back plate call it assembly here. I'm going to loosen the nut, slide the washer off, slide the propeller on to the shaft, nut, or washer then nut, get it finger tight. Then I'm going to grab the wing panel and I'm going to slide the call it adapter onto the shaft of the motor. And, and by the way, I have seen some people talk about uh, treating the shaft in different ways to improve the um, the, the collet attachment. And I will say this, that this collet style, the goal here is as much surface area as possible, getting contact with the collet. And so some people have said sanding it or scoring it. Some of those may or may not work because if you actually sand it, you remove some material by adding some texture to it. Uh, you wanna keep as much of the material as possible. Some people have mentioned dimpling it, for example, would be helpful, um, but none of those things are necessary. As long as you use the correct tool, the correct amount of force to tighten it and hold the spinner back plate, motor and shaft from spinning, you can get it tight enough with just the shaft just the way it is out of the box and the collet just the way it comes out of the box. You don't have to add any Loctite or glue or anything like that. So I'm gonna slide it into place on this motor shaft. Oh, and by the way, when you slide it on, make sure that you have it fully bottomed out. And when you do that, there should be a gap between the back plate of the spinner, the back of the back plate of the spinner, and also then the front of the cowling. So you don't wanna have it too far out. You wanna bottom it out of the way. And when it does it, just make sure that it's not rubbing. And it shouldn't be with the tolerances that we used. And so now I'm going to use my socket again to tighten this. And this is, uh, you know, takes some, some practice probably to get this right. But I've done this a few times now and I'm holding a combination of the prop and also the spinner back plate and making sure that it doesn't turn as I tighten down that nut on that shaft. 
And there we go. And that's it. And then we install that spinner cone. And of course, the first few times that you run the motors up, and this is the case for any, any model that you've just installed the propeller on, you want to make sure that you're doing it in an open area free of people and obstructions. Of course, if a propeller comes off, it's going to go forward and then potentially off to some side. And so you want to make sure everything in front of the propeller and off to the sides is very, very clear. And in this case, I would recommend to run it up and down on the ground many times, throttle all the way off to all the way full throttle very quickly, abruptly change throttle within the power range is also important to do. Now in flight, it's going to experience different loading than you'll experience on the ground. Um, but that said, you can make sure on the ground by running it up and down many times that it's not gonna come loose. Uh, you would not want to lose a propeller on takeoff in particular, uh, but you also don't wanna make sure you don't lose a propeller during an aggressive aerobatic maneuver in the air as well. For example, a flat spin, it's very hard to get out of a flat spin when you lose one prop. Um, you have to throttle back and kind of fly out of it. So, so now that we've got the wing panels ready to go, we've got the props installed on both sides, we're going to install the wing panels on the fuselage. And what's really nice is again, we, we took the time to design this to have this um, basically hands-free connection here with the power leads going in there and then the servo connections and the light power connections they're all in that one connector and so you don't have to fumble around with any connectors and you also don't have to use a tool to install the wings because you can use the thumb screws that were included so to start we need the wing joiner tube so we've got that here we can slide that into the fuselage and then slide the wing panel into place. And this design is fantastic because it makes it really easy to remove and install the wing panels for storage and transport. And you guys can see now I've got the one wing panel on and I'm pushing the, uh, the wing joiner tube down in there to make sure that I've got no gap here really between the fuselage and the wing and then I've got my joiner tube pretty much fully seated there. There are thumb screws included. There is a longer thumb screw and a shorter thumb screw. There's two of each. And the longer uh, thumb screws go in the leading edge. So the hole here in the front. And of course the shorter one goes at the trailing edge. And you may have to uh, put a little pressure on the end of the wing and fuselage by pressing them together to make sure that the screws go down into the nuts correctly. Get those kind of finger snug there. It's about all it takes. Now there are actually uh, some straight blade um, cuts in the, in the heads here so you can use a screwdriver if you'd like to tighten it down further. And now I'm going to install the other wing panel. Such a neat, neat arrangement. I really like how easy this is. And of course, the first few times you do this, all the parts are gonna to fit together tight. So you'll have to uh, maybe use a little more force than you'll have to use later on. Install the thumb screws. And again, you'll have to put a little bit of force on the wing against the fuselage to make sure that the holes align properly so you can get the thumb screw down into the nut. And once you do, you'll be able to tell. You'll feel it starting to thread down. And of course, it will shorten everything up until they're snug. And that's it. That basically is the assembly of the EC1500 twin. You guys can see again, although the wingspan is 1.5 meters and I think a lot of people decided in their mind that that's uh, not a particularly large model, this is a very, very large model. So you can see how wide the fuselage is, how much wing cord we've got. Um, this is a, a very substantial model. Has a lot of presence in the air, has a lot of capability. 
Uh, there's a lot of exciting things that it can do. Again, it can fly in semi-scale or scale-like fashion. It can fly aerobatics. It can also fly uh, 3D aerobatics. So you can actually hang on the prop. You can do high alpha maneuvers. You can do incredible flat spins, things that people wouldn't normally consider an airplane that looks like this being able to do. And I know some people have said, hey, it looks like a, a cargo airplane. That's how you should fly it. Well, you know, that said, if, if that was the case, there are a lot of guys like myself that would see it and go, wow, that's really nice, but I might lose interest in the airplane very quickly. Now I can enjoy the aspect of a, a cargo style model that flies in a scale like fashion, but I can also do aerobatics and 3D aerobatics with it as well. And that makes the model uh, more appealing to me and to a wider audience potentially. So again, there's an entire video where we cover all the features and benefits of the airplane with the designer Matt Andron. Uh, be sure to take a look out for that. And then down the road, we'll also have videos where we talk more about uh, how to set up a radio, how to program uh, different um, options for the uh, mixing. If you have a seven or more channel radio, we will have uh, other setups available for that um, on the potential Spectrum website and also on the horizonhobby.com website. Uh, and if you have any other questions or, or concerns, or if you want to know more about the assembly of this model, you can respond in the comments here on the video. You can also contact our product support staff. Uh, but again, it's a very easy to assemble model. Make sure you take the time to install the props as securely as possible. Uh, and then also make sure that you check all your control surfaces for neutral uh, and all of those typical things that you should do whenever you have a new model that's nearly ready to fly. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye.